Hello everyone, hope you all fine. I have a new PC, so yeah, I'm back in Blender. Today I will show you how I did this simple animation. As usual, it's a beginner level, so it's gonna be easy. First, we add a plane for the garage door, Shift A, plane. We rotate it and scale it for the need of our scene. And then we have to add some material. And first, I'll show you how I do it using an add-on. And then I will show you a method without the add-on. Okay, the way I do it is by using the Extreme PBR add-on. The link will be in the description. I use this add-on all the time because it contains around 1100 materials plus many functions to ease your life in Blender. So I click on the plane, then N, Extreme PBR add-on. I choose the material that I want. And under Map Kit, I also select this place. Add New. And here, I have my material applied. Now I go in edit mode and add some subdivisions to this plane. I think 60 is enough. I switch to render mode and play with the displacement values. And here we go. It's not flat and it's good looking. Okay, another way to do that without the add-on is to use Bridge from Epic Games. It's a great tool where you can have free materials, high quality assets and the famous mega scans and meta human. Okay, so you go in quicksell.com slash bridge. You download Bridge and you create an Epic game account, all free. And yes, it's the same account for Fortnite, so you might have already one. After the installation, you just have to select Blender for the export target, and that's it, we are all set. So in Bridge, we look for, for example, Metal Corrugated. You select your resolution, I will go for 2K, and you click Download. After that, you export the material, and you will have it available in Blender. If it's not working properly, just restart Blender and Bridge. You might want to do this the first time. To apply this material on the plane, you go in the Material tab and you select what you just exported. And here we go, we have our material applied. From here, we go in Shading and we change the rotation of the surface to 90 degrees. It looks pretty good. If needed, you can also scale it. Now we need to give it some relief. So like in the first scenario, we add some subdivisions. Edit mode and 60. Now let's add some displacements and let's use the normal map for that. I add the displacement node. I change the feature set to experimental and material settings to displacement and bumps. And that's it. We have a beautiful garage door with some relief. It's a little more complicated than using the add-on, but hey, it's free. Now let's add a plane for the floor. Shift A, add plane. We scale it, and we go back in bridge to find the material for our floor. A gravel road, for example. Because you are going to zoom on it, you might want to download the 4K version. And you do the same to apply the material. Now is a good time to decide our framing. Let's place the camera where we want it, and Ctrl Alt 0 to set the shot. To adjust your framing, you click on N, View, and tick Camera to View. From there, you just have to place your camera where you want it. We have our initial setup ready, and we can start to import some assets from Bridge. If you type Trash, you will find everything that you need to fill your shot. After some arrangements, you should have something like me. As usual for the lights, we want to use an HDRI. I have some special HDRIs that I got from the Blender market. The link will be in the description. I like those HDRIs, of course because of the quality, but also because in normal sky HDRIs, you often have either this black background or a background that you don't want to use. But you can't use the transparent option because you still need a sky. So those HDRIs are perfect for that. Of course, you can use any free HDRIs you have on polyhaven.com, for example. And here how you could integrate this HDRI. You go in Shading, you select World, and here are the nodes you could use. A Texture Coordinate, a Mapping Node, your HDRI that you plug to the background. For the puddles on the floor, it's simple. I used to do it with an image, but now I use a noise texture after seeing this tutorial. And I think it gives you more flexibility. So let me show you how to do that. You go in Shading, you select the ground, you add a geometry node, a noise texture, and a color ramp. To see the effect, you connect the color ramp to the material output surface, 
and to see the puddles, you can play with the color ramp, the scale and the details. Then you plug back the principal BSDF, you create three mix RGB nodes. And you place them right before the base color, roughness and normal. For the base color, you select multiply and gray for color 2. For the roughness, you select multiply and black for color 2. And for the normal, you select mixed and you add a normal map for color 2. Finally, you plug the color ramp to all the fact of the three mixed RGBs we just created. From there, you just play with the color ramp, scale and details until you have something you like. And you could repeat this process on the boxes for this wet and used effect. I would like to add some bumps on the floor to create some imperfections, but I want to do so manually, so I can select exactly where I want my bumps. So you go in scut mode and you add some bumps everywhere you need. Don't forget to smooth shade at the end. Okay, now let's add our Legos. I'm sure you already know where to find them, but just in case, the website is mechabricks.com. First, you have to install their free plugin to import the assets. Then you simply select or build your minifigure and you click on export. Careful with the import, sometimes you have to zip it again. If you don't have a ZMBX file, then you should zip it and rename it to .zmbx. To import your Lego, you click on File, Import, Mechabricks. And for me, I had to fix two things, the size, because the Lego imported was huge, and the texture, because when I tried to scale it down, I had some weird artifacts on the materials. So a Lego is about 4 cm high, so you just have to scale it down until you have this value. But then you will notice that the material is not good anymore. So to fix it, you go in shading, and for each part of the Lego, you change the scale value to minus 6. For the LEGO rig, I use this free rig, which is absolutely wonderful and easy to install. The link to download it will be in the description. And thanks to the team who created this free tool for us. You install the plugin as usual, edit, preferences, install, you select your file, and you activate the add-on. Here how to install the rig on your minifigure, but don't forget to delete the empty first. You select all your parts, then Epic Fig Rig, and you click Rig Selected Minifigure. From there, it's very easy to manipulate the rig. You just go in pose mode and do whatever you want. Then you can place your minifigure in your scene. For the animation, it's pretty simple. You go in pose mode and you add keyframes on the controls you want to animate. Don't forget to change the interpolation to fit your need. If you want more details on this part, don't hesitate to ask me in the comment section. For the camera, I like to activate the deep of fields for a more cinematic look and generally, I don't go under 1.2 for the f-stop. For the animation, as usual, you place one keyframe at the start and one at the end. Then I wanted some shadows to simulate the street activity. I knew that I will add some sounds, but I also knew that the shadows would look great. So you go in Mixamo, you create a free account if it's not already the case, you select a character that looks human and a walk animation. You press download, you select FBX with skin and your desired FPS. Then you just have to import it in Blender. And animate the position. Once you're happy, you can duplicate your animation and change the start and end point. For the render, I used 300 samples and PNG. As usual, I did some grading in DaVinci Resolve. And that's it, you have your animation. Then it's up to you to create a little story like I did. If you have questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the comment section. Now that I'm back, I answer fairly quickly. Thanks a lot for watching and I see you soon.